I'm going to have a quick look at Elemental version 3.31. I've got it on screen. Now we are told about variables, filters, dividers, attributes, and stuff like that. This all relates to version four. So we are being told that we're going to now have build consistent design systems with color and font variables. We've got some layered visual effects with CSS filters, glass like backdrop filters. I've got videos on the Apple liquid effect, which I really don't like. But, you know, if you want to go and apply the liquid effect, you can do clean visual structure, manage classes. Okay, there's quite a lot to go through here. I'm going to jump over into my WordPress dummy website. Got to go into Elemental Tools, go over to Version Control and make sure your beta testing is set to enable. Never do this on a live production website. Always, always, always do this on a test website or a dummy website. If you do this on a live production website and the beta screws something up, that's kind of your problem. You got to make sure you got a backup. We can now see that version 3.31 beta is available. So we're going to hit update. So the first thing I'm going to look at colors and font variables. Okay, so we got these version four elements. We've got the new one over there, which is the divider. Um, and we'll come back onto that in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a heading like that. Let's go over to background, not background, typography. Click over here to text color. And I'm going to type in something like FFF0050. Now we have these icons over here, which are clear. And then we have variables. We don't have the like global color system in a way here. And that was something that was picked up with version four. You know, where's the global colors, you know? We do all of this branding and color paletting. Why don't we have it here? If we now click on the variables, I'm going to create my first variable, pink underscore red. And I'm going to pop my uh, hex code over there. And then we're going to click create. Uh, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this and I'm going to hit the plus sign. So can you see what I'm doing here? Should I zoom in? Probably helps if I zoom in. So let me do that again, right? So I've gone and added in a variable color, basically like using your color palette. If I click back onto here, we can see the one I'm using. But if I wanted to add another color, I'm going to click on here and I'm now going to hit the plus sign. And I'm just going to call this black and I'm going to click over here and I could either pick a color or type in the hex code and then I'll hit create. So if I ever want to change that, because now it's gone to black, I would just click the text and I could pick one of my colors. It's not too dissimilar to what you'd be doing with the global colors. The difference is, though, is that before you would have to go to the site settings. Now it's a more of a case of uh, click one and then you get to go and pick your color. So that's not bad. That actually is uh, much definitely needed. And I think I'm kind of glad that we now have this variable. We are also told that we can do it for font family as well. I'm going to go and hit variable. I'm going to say create a variable and I'm going to call it Merryweather. Now the value, here we go. So there's your system fonts. And then underneath, we get the custom fonts and then we have all the Google. So I'm going to pick Merriweather and I'm going to click Create. That's pretty good. It's now gone to Merriweather. And if I was to click over here, I could now pick other custom fonts. I think all it's doing is giving you back what you were able to do before because it wouldn't make sense. That being said, though, I think one of my big bugbears, and I've said this many, many times, is that, look, you go over here. This is all super, super great, but we still don't have the custom CSS tab for any of the elements. And really, if I'm honest, I really want to see that brought back into fashion really, really quickly. We're also told about apply layered visual effects. So we now have some uh, filtering effects where we can apply different colors. If we go back over here and I click onto this heading, I'm going to get rid of typography. Let's go to effects. So let's click the filter option so I can now blur my text. I may want to go for a completely different option like a grayscale. So let's make it be 50%. So we've gone and applied some grayscale. Then we're told about the great class like UI with backdrop filters, which is glass morphism. And we're basically told that for background filters, the elements must have a transparent background. Okay, let's go and try that out. I'm going to make this container have an image. We'll set the position to be uh, center center. And then I'm going to drop in another container inside of here. So let's go 
let's just add in a div block. Let's make the size of this be something like 500 by 500 like that. And I'm going to pick this heading up and I'm just going to paste it inside and in the div. So to apply the glass morphism, make sure you're on the div block or whatever you're doing. And don't forget, you can do this to your heading or your images, basically anywhere where you have a background. Go to backdrop filters and we are going to be using the blur. Now, this is where it may be confusing. I would have expected that to be called glass morphism. We're going to go for blur and I'm going to go and pop in a value of, that's a bit too harsh. Let's go for 10. So you can see the blur effect we got going on over there. And I'm going to add in a bit more styling. I'm going to give it about 25 border radius. And if you want, you could also add in a little bit of a box shadow as well. So if we just view this, can you see the effect we're getting there? That's the glass morphism kicking in. And don't forget, just like with the background images where you could add in an image and a gradient and you can layer things up, you can go in, hit the plus sign. So we've already got a blur going on and I may decide that I want to do grayscale. So if I was to go with something like this, 80, can you see how we've got the glass morphism using the blur and we've got grayscale activated as well? And don't forget, you can increase and decrease that percentage. We're also told that we have a clean visual structure with the new divider element, which we already spotted. So let's go back over here. And I'm now just going to drop in the divider widget. And remember, you can give it a class name. You know, if you want to create a global class for it and styling, we can give it an ID as well in case you want to apply some custom script or code to it or even link to it. We're going to go to the size tab and I'm going to set this to be 400. Now, at the minute, it's aligned to the left. If I go to the layout, I can change it to be on the center, the right. I'm going to go over to the height. And if I set that as 100, you can see what it does there. It's now made it 100 pixels uh, high. If you do go and add any padding in there, so if I go and do something like 50, that's 50 top, 50 bottom, which equals 100, which is kind of the same as the height. But if you wanted to create breathing space, what you really want to be doing is using your margin. So that now creates 50 all the way around. And if you get it wrong, you'll realize you'll get it wrong because you'll see it suddenly grow up or grow really, really big. In terms of changing the color, and I'm just going to double check this. If we go to background, I could change the color here. But earlier we looked at the variables, which returns us back into, you know, like the global colors system. So I could click this over here and I could go and pick one of my other colors and you can see what it's doing. Um, don't forget, I did take off the 100 pixels, which is why my line is really small and it goes back to the default one pixel. We are told in version 3.31 beta that we can now see where a class has been used. OK, let's test that out. So if we go over here and I am now going to create, uh, I've got a class over here called video. That's one I did in a previous tutorial. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to apply it here and it's gone and applied like a shadow effect. I'm going to drop in an image and I'm going to go to style tab and I'm going to give that a video as well. You can see the shadow effect. I'm going to go to the plus sign and I'm going to drop in a button and I'm not going to apply that class that I had before. So if I was to now go over to my class manager and I click that icon, can you see that icon there like a target like crosshair thing? If I click that, it now shows me that it's on page V4. So what this is going to do is show me where it's in use and it's on the V4 page. This page is called V4 and it's showing me there. If I click that, it's going to take me into page V4. We were already there. So it would be nice if it didn't chuck me out because I already was on the V4 page. That was interesting, but we are told it is used in two places. So if I click that, Again, it's taken me over to V4. I don't know if this is even possible. And I bet I'll create a code snippet one day to make it possible. If there was a way that you could like, I don't know, click a button or hover over something. And then the class name somehow appeared like a tooltip everywhere. So it says it's here and it's here, but it's not here. Styling at a glance with inherited values. When a style is inherited, whether from a class or higher breakpoint, Editor V4 will now display that inherited value as a muted placeholder. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a paragraph. I'm going to go over to my spacing and I'm going to make this 50 from the top 
and then 20 everywhere else. And I'm going to give this a background color so you can see the bigger top uh, padding at the moment. Now then, I'm also going to go to my typography and I'm going to give this a font size. I'm going to give this an REM of 4. When we go over to the mobile, we can see that we've still got the sizing of the typography because we're not using font clamp here. And we still have the 50, 20, 20, 20 going all the way around except 50 at the top. Now, if we go over to the padding, you can see here we aren't seeing the same values, but don't be fooled by that. If we go to typography, you can see the four REM is there, but it's grayed out and that's because it's inheriting. But where is it inheriting it from? Can you see here we have a gray dot? If you click that, it's now going to tell me it's inheriting the four REM from the desktop. Let me just close that. If we go over here to the top and I click it, it's inheriting the 50 pixel from the desktop. And if we go over here, it's inheriting the 20 from the desktop as well. And if we go back over to the desktop, you can see they're all in pink at the moment because, well, their origin was started off at the higher breakpoint, which is the desktop, which we're already on. So Elemental version 3.31 beta release, it's out now. Go and try it out. Don't forget to do it on a dummy or a stage website. It's going to allow us to now get back to using global colors, global fonts, something we're very much used to, but you are doing it via variables. We will get used to it once it becomes the norm. So don't start firing off and going, oh, I hate it. I don't like it. Give it a chance. Okay. Because once you understand it, it works really, really well. We've got the filters, glass morphism, blurring, the divider line. We've now got that in. I was, I did wonder when we had the version fours, I didn't say it in a video, but I did wonder where's the divider line? Why is that not in there at the moment? And also don't forget that, you know, the class manager, it's now going to allow us to see um, or on what pages are classes being used. And of course, we have the inherited style. So if you go and set a style on a class or a higher breakpoint, and then you go down to the tablet or the mobile and it inherits that, click the dot to see where it came from. Hey, look, I hope you found that useful. Love to see what your comments are. Link for this is in the video description. Don't forget, you can go over and add your comments if you spot any bugs or you want elements to look into something a little bit deeper, go and have a go. But like I said, stick it on a staging or a dummy site. I'm Imran Web Squadron. Like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon.